Hi guys and dolls and welcome back to Vintage or Tacky. So today's tutorial is going to be sort of like an evolution of a look. I wanted to show how versatile this palette is. This is the Natasha Denona Safari palette, which I really love. And I will have like a little mini review of this palette within this tutorial. But also because I have to go to the periodontist today and I don't think that the blue glitter is that cute at the dentist. I mean, you could. I mean, if you want to wear blue glitter to the dentist, do you boo. This is not where I'm at at 3 o'clock in the afternoon on a Tuesday. I recently was sent some really cool foundation from Makeup Forever that I have been dying to play around with. The Makeup Forever Matte Foundation, which is really exciting. This is like a new version of their velvet matte that they've had for years. Within the PR box, there's also a uh, primer, which I'm going to use today. There's a brush that comes with it, which I may or may not use. I haven't decided. I already wet a beauty blender, so we have a backup just in case. And if I could get the foundation out, we will be good to go. I love that they have these little skinny necks on their squeezy tubes. It makes it really easy. So I like this primer because it doesn't have that heavily silicone thick feeling that a lot of primers can have. This is R210. That is the color that I'm using today. The R series is the red base. The Y series would be the yellow based. I have very little on the brush. And I'm going to take it in places where I really need it like right under here I usually get really really red and then I'll just come in with the beauty blender just to sort of blend it in and pound any lines away not that there really were any I'm actually quite impressed with how this foundation's covering pores you know I typically don't like flat foundation brushes but I think because this one's wide and has like a very tapered um, edge the way that the brushes are. I really kind of like this. I think the thing that's most impressive about this foundation is I don't feel the need to put concealer on. Um, you know, if I wanted to sit here and like really nitty, nitty gritty pick my skin apart, maybe there's an area or two that I could use concealer on. But I think it's going to look nicer if I don't do it. So I'm not gonna. For primer today, I'm using this one from Smashbox. This is the Photo Finish Lid Primer. This has a yellow tint to it, which is really great for canceling out the red tones in my eyelids. And after I get that on, I'm going to pick up a synthetic brush to blend it out. Making sure to really blend it at the inner and outer corners along the lash line. Something I never see anyone do but it's really important for making your makeup all very smooth. So, so this is the Natasha Denona. The Natasha Denona Safari Palette is an all matte eyeshadow palette consisting of 15 shadows and retailing for $129. Yeah, so we're just gonna address the money thing right away. This is a really expensive eyeshadow palette. It is intended for people who are um, in a place where they can buy a palette like this and it really enjoy fun makeup stuff and or maybe professionals. Um, look, you're either into this kind of thing or you're not. You're either like, yeah, I'd spend $129 on these 15 amazing eyeshadows or you're like, there is nothing that would make me spend this much money on an eyeshadow palette. I'm going to review this eyeshadow palette based on the content of its character and not how much it costs. Now before we get into any further into this review, I want to remind you guys to give me a thumbs up and a like if for no other reason than look at that little cute face. Come on. Gosh, I need to vacuum my floor. Anyway, moving on, here are the shadows in the palette. I really love the color combination in this palette. Even from the first moment when they were showing us black and white um, images of this palette. I just liked the the depth of color, the kind of mix of things that you have going on here. You have this top row that is very cool toned. You have this middle row which is kind of like your standard warm eyeshadows at this point. Like everybody has to have warm colors. And then the bottom has these beautiful um, burgundies and purples and this really cool like yellow tan shade which is going to be so fantastic uh, for blending all these different colors together. One one thing I really like is that when you look at this palette it makes sense like you can immediately see like colors how you'd like to put them together so what I'm doing here is I'm just kind of showing you guys what my swatch process is um, it's really hard to do swatches on camera so this is just me showing you the process of how I do it 
And then in a moment here, I'm going to have some cleaned up swatches for you. But I am swatching these on my hand without primer, without any kind of special thing. And these ones were actually mostly done with one wipe. These ones that you're seeing here, these more, quote, professional looking swatches. Um, then we have the warm shadows after the cool. Uh, really love Tribe in particular. This is a really great combination of colors. Um, some people also know that um, Malia and Aya are somewhat similar. I think they're quite different, but... I pick up on the nuance and as somebody who's fair toned I need those nuance between a pink tone cream and a yellow tone cream um, and tamarind is another really call out eyeshadow that's fantastic. So here are all of the eyeshadows swatched on my arm same method you know just swiping on dry skin no primer uh, wanted to show you guys what all the colors look like together and kind of get a little bit of an idea of how they really do have this beautiful harmony to them. And here are the brush swatches so for that I did place down primer and you see that these to me look drier and much more pigmented um, so I actually prefer the finger swatches but I wanted to show you guys both methods just in case you prefer one over the other uh, and this I think also shows the intensity of the shadows a little bit better than the finger swatches I also wanted to show you something special about this palette. It has a magnetic thing that holds the shadows in, and there are these little dots on the back where you can pop the shadows out. This is really great for any kind of makeup lover if you wanna pop these out and travel with them, or for professionals, you can make a, um, a special little palette if you don't wanna carry this whole palette. I think this is actually a really good palette for professionals because it has all these intense colors in together with some neutrals. Um, but if you want to break it up, you absolutely can. And I think it's great that it has that packaging option. It's something I wish more companies would do. So I am going to start out today's look with Malia. Very similar in tone to my skin color. This is just a base shade. I'm applying that with a Wayne Goss 17. And we're going to place that all over the entire lid. Lashes to brow. Next, taking a Wayne Goss 3, I'm going to pick up Masai. And what I like about this brush is that it's fluffy, but it sort of comes to, it's sort of like pinched. It comes to a bit of a, t a tip. I'm going to knock that off a little bit so there's not an excess of pigment on it. And then I'm going to ride that right in my crease line. Where is my mirror? I need to see what I'm doing. I'm going to ride that right in my crease line right here in the outer corner. And you want to use windshield wiper motions. And you want to make it as smooth as possible. So initially I laid down the color here and then once the majority of the color was deposited, this is the same side that had the shadow on it. I will flip that again to face my eyelid and then smooth it out by doing the windshield wiper motions that way. So that way it's going one way with a little bit of pigment left on the brush and then it goes back the other way without pigment and switch the brush over to sideways. That's the genius of a brush like this is the shape of it lends itself to be used different ways as opposed to, um, and I'm just going to compare it to another Wayne Goss brush so that it's not like a brand comparison. This is a fully round brush and this is also a great blending brush, but it's a little bit less effective at packing on color, whereas this one is great for applying color as well as for blending it out. And you know, I'm going to make this side just a little more intense. I'm going to take Lotus, which is this really pretty pink in the palette, and I'm going to use that on the inner bit here to cool it down. You got to cool it down before you lose control. I'm going to take Amhara, this absolutely gorgeous terracotta shade. Oof, so excited. Same brush. One thing that's really great about this look is that it's so easy to achieve with one eyeshadow brush. Now, I just actually didn't. I just went and goofed. Oh, I, I applied too much. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Super important to be very mindful of how you're picking up product. So now I'm taking that blending brush that I was talking about earlier and I'm just using that to just kind of go to town and try to make that line soft, which actually did work, which is fantastic. Um, next, I will softly go in with that same brush that had the pigment on it and just make it a little more opaque because it was a bit patchy because I just sort of placed it and then tried to blend it out from there. Not a great way to do shadow to pack it and then try to blend it out. For most of this, our eyelid will sort of grab onto one spot, so it's best to have a brush that has the pigment on it and softly apply. That's why I love these Wayne Goss brushes is because they're sort of floppy and they move around a lot. And then come in with another blending brush to actually get your blend on. 
So this is sort of like a naked lid look. This is something that I've liked to do for a number of years. What I'm now going to do is take Aya, which is the uh, cream color from the palette that has less of a pink base. It's still very flesh toned compared to my skin color. And I'm just going to pop that on the lid to make the lid as bold as possible. And the reason why I'm using this instead of the more pink tone is because this is slightly more of like a yellow tone, it's going to stand out more against these like pinky shades of the crease. I got this new eyeliner the other day. If you've already seen my makeup haul, then you already have seen this. If you haven't watched my makeup haul, you should definitely watch that after you're done with this video. Um, this is uh, the Kat Von D Lash Liner. So this is a pretty unique product. I've never seen anything quite like this. It's a liquid eyeliner that is safe for your lash line. Uh, I don't have a palette again, so I'm just gonna put it on the back of my hand. You can totally just use it straight from this if you really want to. I think it works best with a little brush and also it keeps the product sanitary so I can keep rocking it with it a little bit longer. So uh, yeah, I get a little bit of that on the back of my hand. It's very, very black. And then this is a small liner brush. This one happens to be from Smith Cosmetics. It is the 212. So I am going to, you use this underneath your lash line, at least that's how I'm using it. Almost like a mascara. And that's why I like it, is that it gives me a really thick lash look. And I can actually carry it into my lashes for a little bit of a softer lash look. For somebody with blonde eyelashes, this product is basically essential. Picking a little bit of a... Uh, too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara for my lashes. This is Clear Brow Gel from Makeup Forever. It has little fibers in it which help to make your lashes look a little heavier. To add a little bit of glow to my face, I'm going to use something neutral. This is Pearl from Becca. This is a really, oh don't let me drop it. This is a pretty neutral highlight. And I like that because I'm going to be able to change and do whatever I want later. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this right here on the bridge of my nose just to make that come out a little bit more. I'm also going to place it right here on the tops of my cheeks. For blush today, I'm going to be using Makeup Geek and I'm going to use Spellbound. My absolute all-time favorite Makeup Geek blush. It just always looks perfect. I don't really have to worry about it. It will go with any look. Okay, so I'm going to put on a little bit of my Pat McGrath lipstick. Wait, did I forget how to do this? Do you guys see this? What the hell? My lipstick is broke. Okay, so to sheer out the lipstick that I'm going to put on top, I'm going to put a little bit of this Tatcha lip mask. Scoop a little bit of it out with the enclosed little scooper. And what I like to do is actually use this to apply it to my lips and then I'll sanitize this afterward before I use it again. And just hit this on all lower down lips. And since my lipstick's broken, I'm just going to use it out of the tube. This is Flesh 3. So I'm going to go to the dentist now because hashtag self care. But okay, so I know you all probably thought I was crazy going to the dentist with lipstick on. Of course I took it off before I went to the dentist. So this is actually what I look like. I do have a lip product in my bag, which I'm going to put on after my dental appointment because you know your lips always get dry. Um, so yeah, this is me heading into the dentist. Very exciting. And you can see the makeup in different lighting environments. Okay, so my appointment went really well, and this is kind of one of the fun things I want to do with this video, is kind of show you different ways to use makeup. So I'm going to now apply a lip product because I have naked lips at the moment, and I'm going to use this Makeup Forever Ultra HD um, Lip Booster in the shade 1. This also comes in a clear version as well, I just like the tinted one. 
because it gives you just a little, just a little something something. And that way I'm not totally naked faced as I go and do all the rest of my errands. Hey baby, where are we? We're in Oakland. What are we gonna do? Shoe shop. Shoe shopping! Sounds so exciting, but it's actually for sneakers. Yeah. Yeah, what are you gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> I'm paying for parking. I know, but I wanna go, because I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. See that little place right there? They have this thing called the Rice Triangles, and I'm trying to get in that. Get That's in it? Trying, yeah, I'm trying to get trying in. Trying to get it in you. No, I'm trying to get in it. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. Hey, baby. Yeah? Smell it. <laughs> Rubber. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole new shoe smell doesn't really work for sneakers. All right, are we ready to try the rice triangle? Get in my belly. Is my mascara transferring? Freaking mascara. All right, so we just got served our food. Look at these little nuggets of deliciousness. You can't sit there. Oh, there you go. Here. Oh, it's hot. Oh, uh, yeah. Try mine. Watch your lip, it's hot. <laughs> I like how you blurt out you biting into it. I'm trying. I'm not good at food vlogging. Oh my god, it's so good. Okay guys, so I just got back from the dentist and having lunch and a couple other things, so I need to retouch my makeup. I'm gonna zoom it in so you guys can see what state we're in at this point. Foundation is doing really, really well. I'm super impressed with this foundation. It photographed beautifully, and I used it as my concealer today. I didn't put any extra concealer on, and my under eye is not creasing, it's not greasy. I am super impressed, like really, really impressed. I do have some smudging here from my mascara, so I am going to clean this up just a little bit. I love using Bioderma for this. It's just the best makeup remover because you can just apply stuff right over it. You don't have to rinse it. The next thing I want to do is touch up the makeup. So I have a little bit of the foundation on the back of my hand. And again, we didn't powder this so we can go directly over it with the foundation without much care. I just need a little bit extra in a couple places where my skin tends to get red because now we're converting this to a night look or a more, you know, intense look. I don't really believe in like daytime, nighttime, like you wear whatever, whenever. It doesn't really matter. And I am super impressed with this brush. You guys remember, I thought I was gonna end up using my beauty blender, but it turns out not so much, didn't need it. I'm gonna see if I can make Savannah work for my brows. So I'm gonna start with that. We'll see if this is like a crazy idea. A little bit of that on a Kat Von D brow brush. And then I need my mirror. So do you see what I mean by it? the fact that it's not really like green? It's just a brown that doesn't have red pigment. It's really good for filling in brows actually. This would be such a good color for filling in brows if you have hair that doesn't have red pigment in it. Like even still there's a bit of warmth to it. So it's not like a graying effect, which is really nice. And just to kind of show you guys, natural brow, brow with Savannah. And to me, it's deeper for sure, but it's also just almost looks like a more saturated tone and a, a more defined shape for the brow. Give me my little tail. Oh, and we are in business good idea when you're going to refresh your shadow is just use the brush you used earlier to just kind of sweep over the shadow that's still there. Just kind of refresh it. To make the highlight pop, I'm going to take Aya, which is the same color that we used on the lid earlier. And I'm going to use this right under the brow right there. We're going to get into intensifying this. Um, first thing, I want to show you guys how much kick up I got from Savannah because I was using it with like a stiff synthetic brush versus using these powdered shadows with a, a soft uh, natural brush. So I'm still, you know, patting the brush in there, but it doesn't kick up nearly as much because it's a softer brush. So this is Voodoo. I'm gonna tuck that right into that crease again. And this is a much deeper color. It's a bit more on the purple burgundy side. So it's really gonna intensify out there. So now I'm gonna take Masai and this will be my inner corner color. So earlier we had done it with Lotus, which is that light pink. And now we're gonna do it with Masai, which is that deeper berry color. 
sort of layering shadows on top of each other, changing the effects. And then one was a little bit lighter. Now this is a much more intense nighttime focus look. Again, nighttime in quotations. I'm gonna pick up another naked brush and I'm gonna dip it into Tribe. Just a little tiny bit of that shadow. Just really kind of bopped it in the in the shadow. And I'm going to, this, ha this brush has a bit of a point to it, so I'm going to put the pointy point, the pointy side like out towards my temple and sweep that red orange in. And the tiniest little bit of Fata Morgana. Just right in the crease. I'm actually closing my eyes for this because I just want to get that just right there. And it's going to make that burgundy purple into tiny bit more of like a navy purple. Now for the lid I'm going to use this Stila, um, what are these called? Shimmer and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. So, oh my gosh, look, look at this. The genius of these is you can literally just pop them on your eye. Now if you want to be sanitary, you can totally use a brush, which is what I'm going to do today. Um, but you can absolutely just use it straight from the applicator and it works really well. Using a synthetic because this is a uh, you know, cream or liquid, you don't want um, it to break down the natural bristles. So there's definitely reasons why um, synthetic can be better or why natural can be better, and I feel like I've done a pretty good job of illustrating that in this video. And I'm just gonna layer this all on my lid, and I think I'm gonna keep it just really right at my natural lid, and I'll blend it out from there. The first things first is just to get it well spread and even. Take long strokes over to make it smooth. And then just kind of bop it a little bit in the outer corner just to make it a little bit less solid. So I have like a chunk of it that was on my lid. And I'm looking at the viewfinder and this doesn't look that vivid but holy crap is this vivid in person. This is one of the most beautiful, intense blues I've ever used. And it's like literally that easy. Boom. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to touch up my under eye with a little bit of Touche Claw from YSL. For my under eye liner, I'm also going to use the lash liner from Kat Von D with a fresh brush. sort of stamp it on the brush and I'm going to use it under my lash line. I'm going to draw a straight line like that. I'm just going to take a Q-tip to blend it out a little bit and it turns kind of a gray transparent shade, which is quite neat. For my under eye, I started out with stone and then moved on to Fata Morgana and then used Rhino. So I used all three of these colors together to get sort of a blended smoked out under eye. And then on the upper lid I took a little bit of Tamarind and then later a little bit of Desert Date to blend out the edge of the shadow. So it just looks a little more undone. Just cleaning up any fallout. So now that my eyes are done, I'm going to add a little contour with the Lunatic Cosmetics palette. And I'm actually going to use this really pretty, um, kind of like a burgundy shade. going to swirl that around, tap off the excess. And I've never used this as contour, so we're going to say. I'm not sure if they sell this exact one anymore, but I'm pretty sure they still sell Starburst in some palette or the other. Uh, this is one of the Anastasia Beverly Hills Glow Kits. This is the Gleam Kit. I don't, think I, I, don't, I don't think I sell it, but it's just a highlight. It's just a real, 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 real pretty highlight. And you can still get Starburst, I think, in one of their kits. Just adds that little extra. That, oh, look at that metallic ash sheen. Oh. To start my lips out by filling them in with hickory lip liner or is it chicory or hickory I don't know from Mac and then I'm going to use that same shiny gloss that I used outside the dentist's office Just got a little bit of that on my finger and I'm going to use it as a gloss the liner isn't fully blended yet but once you put the gloss over 
it's just easy peasy lemon squeezy. I'm going to take a little tiny brush and I'm dipping that into lotus and I'm going to put lotus on the lower part here where the gray is shake the hair out and that's the look so i hope that you guys enjoyed this video i know it was a little bit different with the vlogging and stuff let me know what you guys think because i'm really curious to know um because i want to do this i i might want to do this more going forward where's my liner and this is where it gets awkward guys i completely lost my train of thought and started cleaning up my desk and uh, I forgot to film an outro. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons. I'll see you in my next video. Remember that I might be vintage or tacky. Just be your own kind of beautiful. See you, bye.